She's like a sickness in my brain A vision standing by the window pane She ripples through the blinds And leaves me in a daze It's in the way her body moves me The way she grabs me and intoxicates Until the signals in my mind Forget to operate Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for Coffee and Crime Time. And today we are talking about a case that happened about a week ago and it's been developing and things have been coming out as, as time goes on. And I went live last night. Um, I'm recording this on a Saturday. So I went live yesterday, Friday, and I, I told everybody in the live about two cases that I've been looking into that have really um, been causing a, a little emotional stress for me. And this was one of them. The other one will be talked about in our next Coffee and Crime Time, which should be coming out in a few days. But these two cases, I don't know, just to have them happen together or have me look into them together, uh, it was very hard and it's made me really feel not too great about the world. But let's talk about the case of eight-year-old Thomas Valva. Before we get started, I do want to talk about our sponsor, Magellan TV. I want to thank our sponsor and I want to thank you guys for being understanding that we need sponsors for this channel and also understanding that I only ever choose sponsors and talk about sponsors that I 100% believe in. And Magellan TV is a big time supporter of this channel. And if you choose to try Magellan TV out, it is a good way for you to support this channel because we often do get demonetized because of the difficult and tricky subjects that we cover. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming service. They have over 2,000 documentaries and they're adding more every single week. I love opening up my phone and finding that Magellan TV has added new series or new documentary movies. And there's always something on there that I wanna watch and there's always other things on there that I wanna watch that I have to put into my queue. Magellan TV's documentaries are chosen and curated by actual filmmakers, the people who know what makes a good documentary the best. They also have many documentaries available in 4K for no extra charge. You can stream on your phone, on your tablet, your Roku, Apple TV, Smart TV. You can start on your tablet and finish on your TV at home. It's so easy, it's so convenient, and as a lifelong learner, somebody who's really interested in spending my time um, in a worthwhile manner, I like to watch, you know, some random TV shows and stuff that's just fluff, but I really like to spend a lot of my free time learning about things that matter and that are gonna improve my life and, and my mental state and my intelligence. So I do wanna recommend a documentary from Magellan TV for you today. Magellan TV has tons of different genres to choose from, history, science, of course, true crime, but like I said at the beginning of this video, looking into these cases and, and getting deep into this dark world, it can take a toll on you and sometimes you need to watch something that makes you remember there's hope and love in the world. And that's why I wanna to recommend to you today a documentary called Every Precious Day. So this is the heartwarming story of three extraordinary children on the forefront of cancer research. It's a story about hope. It's a story about love. It's a story about overcoming obstacles. It's a story about the strength of the human heart. And I think that's, his, that's what I needed this week. And I, I, you know, I think that a lot of us need that. There's also another really great documentary on there called The Evolution of Evil, The Tyrants of the Last Century. And this really ties into the dark history series we just did. They talk about Hitler, Stalin, Saddam Hussein. So um, very, very interesting. I got really into that. So like I said, on Magellan TV, there is some Something for everybody and if you're interested in trying Magellan TV out check the link in the description box they're giving viewers of this channel one month free you can cancel after there's no contracts you're not tied into anything but I don't think you'll want to cancel all right let's get into the video so on the morning of January 17th it was a Friday police got a call to a Long Island address and the report was that a an eight-year-old boy had fallen in the driveway while he was waiting for the school bus and they got this call about 9 40 a.m. This little boy's name was Thomas Velva, but when the police arrived, they didn't find Thomas in the driveway. They found him in the basement and his father was giving him CPR. He was transported to Long Island Community Hospital and his body temperature was 76 degrees when he arrived. 
and he was pronounced dead. So Thomas's father is a man named Michael Valva, and he's an officer, a police officer with the NYPD. He's a 40-year-old man, and he was engaged to a 42-year-old woman named Angela Polino, and between the two of them, they had six kids in total in the household. Michael had three sons, Thomas, who was eight, and two other sons who were six and 10, and Angela has a six-year-old daughter and two twin 11-year-old daughters. Now, I think it was pretty evident early on when they got Thomas to the hospital and they realized how low his body temperature was, there was something going on that Michael Valvo wasn't telling them. Police actually determined that Thomas Valvo was never in the driveway. He didn't fall in the driveway while waiting for the school bus. And he had suffered head and facial injuries that were not consistent with Michael Valvo's version of the story. His cause of death was determined to be homicide with hypothermia being a major contributing factor. Now this is where we can clearly see that there's abuse going on in this household. And this past Friday, both Michael Valva and his fiance, Angela Polino, were arrested and they were charged with the second degree murder of Thomas Valva. It seems as if Michael Valva has pled not guilty, but the two are being held without bail as they pose a flight risk. There's a lot going on here. There is a lot to be upset about. Apparently, Michael Valva and his fiance Angela, they had a really good security system in their house, both audio and visual. And the police made it seem as if they were kind of using this surveillance system to keep track of the six kids in the household. But the surveillance system could also be used to get evidence and proof that Michael Valva and his fiance Angela were abusing at least Thomas. So Michael Valva actually did give them the password to the security system, you know, go ahead and check it out. But as they were in there reviewing the footage, somebody else logged in, changed the password, and deleted the videos. Obviously, Michael Valva or Angela allegedly don't come for me, but who else could it be really? And here is the most disgusting part of really this entire case, which is just a disgusting, sad, tragic case to begin with. The police were able to hear or capture an audio recording that happened the morning of Thomas's death. And this is a conversation between, it appears to be one of the children in the house, one of the other children in the house, it's not clear which one, and Michael Valva and Angela, his fiance. So on this recording, it's, it's in the morning and another child in the house can be heard asking, why can't Thomas walk? Angela Polina answered this other child and said, because he's hypothermic. When you're washed with cold water and it's freezing, you get hypothermia. Then you hear Michael Valva's voice come in. Michael Valva was Thomas Valva's father. And he said he keeps face planting on the concrete. His fiance, Angela Polino, responds to him, you know why he's falling. And Michael Valva responds to her, because he's cold, boo effing who. Angela Polina responds to him, what are you doing? Michael Valva responds to her, I'm effing suffocating him, that's what I'm doing. Angela Polino responds to him, get your hands off his mouth, there's people watching. The police were also able to recover video footage of two nights before Thomas's murder. And this shows Thomas, eight-year-old Thomas, and his 10-year-old brother Andrew sleeping on the floor of their unheated garage, shivering without any blankets, without any pillows, without any mattresses. So obviously the extent of the abuse going on in this household is still being investigated, but we have people who can attest to the fact that these kids were being abused, which is an issue in itself because you have multiple people who seem to know that something that, that's really off was going on in this home, and yet nobody did anything about it. Police believe that Michael Valva's two sons, Thomas himself and his older brother, were subjected to multiple forms of abuse, such as food deprivation, and exposure to extremely frigid temperatures, which can be shown by Michael and Angela forcing these children to sleep in a garage when it's freezing here in New York. Absolutely freezing. Thomas's mother, who is obviously the estranged ex-wife of Michael Valva, she had some interesting things to say. Now, her name is Justiania Zubico Valva. She's 36 years old and she's a corrections officer on Rikers Island. She claims that her son had a mild form of autism. She says that she and her ex-husband have been going through a bitter divorce and custody battle and she hasn't seen her three sons in two years. The first time that she saw Thomas in two years was when she identified his body at the morgue. 
Now, she claims that she lost custody of her boys two years ago due to false allegations. I have to look more into that. There's really not much out there, and I'm sure more is going to come out as we go along. I don't know anything about the, the allegations, but she is claiming that they're false. And she says she has documented the abuse that's been going on in, in Michael Valva's house with her sons for years. And she's given it to CPS and they've done nothing. There's also documentation from the school district that Thomas and his older brother Anthony attended. Reports that Thomas and Anthony would come to school crying and saying that they're not allowed to eat at home. Once, Thomas came to school with a black eye. Another time, he came to school with a bruise on his forehead from when his father, Michael, threw a book bag at him. There's also reports of Anthony going to school with frostbite on his hands and feet from being forced to sleep in the garage in frigid temperatures. There's reports from the school nurse saying that both boys would show up to school starving in urine-soaked clothes and that Thomas himself hadn't gained weight or gotten any bigger in over a year. Now, this has been called the most disturbing case in the history of the county. And the Suffolk police say that they are in contact with the Department of Social Services, that they are going to look back at every interaction and every complaint that's been made in the past couple of years with the department and they're going to investigate it thoroughly. But to me... I, I appreciate the effort, but to me, it's a little too late. It's too little too late. There has been documented evidence both with CPS and with the school district that these boys were suffering abuse and nothing really happened. Now I'm going to read to you the statement from the Department of Social Services. The Department of Social Services is heartbroken by the passing of Thomas Volva. Department personnel are continuing to provide all available information on this matter to law enforcement and will continue to cooperate fully throughout the investigation. Suffolk County Child Protective Services has had involvement with the Volva slash Polina family. Petitions for child neglect were filed in Suffolk County Family Court in 2018. Safeguards ordered to protect the children included court-ordered home supervision for a period of one year, orders of protection for the parents to refrain from harmful behaviors toward the children, and mandated participation in a positive parenting program had been put in place. Subsequent to the expiration of the order of protection, CPS investigated additional complaints relating to the family. DSS is formally reviewing the management of the case to ensure that all protocols were followed in accordance with the law. Due to confidentiality, mandates, and the nature of this ongoing investigation, the department cannot comment further at this time. And it seems that it wasn't just the mother of these boys, and it wasn't just the school district. There was a babysitter who often watched these six children in 2017. This woman's name is Amanda Wildman, and it appeared she was their babysitter in the years 2017 to 2018, and she claims that they wanted to give the impression that they were like the Brady Bunch, one big, happy, blended family, but that wasn't the case at all. She said, quote, they were always screaming. The boys were constantly being yelled at. There was never a day where somebody wasn't screaming and the boys would just sit there quietly and take it. Amanda Wildman also claims that the boys were treated significantly worse than the girls. In 2017, she went to speak to a police detective about this, but apparently there was no formal complaint filed. And I have my theories about why this might be. I, I have conspiracy theories, if you will. Um, I think that if it's the case, if what I believe is correct, it will eventually come out. But you have to remember that Michael Valvo was an NYPD officer. He's a police officer. So they tend to protect their own. And there are some bad seats. And I'm not saying that every single person in the NYPD or the LAPD, you guys know I, I talk about the LAPD sometimes and how they've been um, ineffectual in the past, but there's not every single police officer in these police departments are bad. In fact, I'm sure that it's a very small percentage. However, the fact that there are bad seats and the fact that there are people who might be interested in helping out a fellow police officer it might lead to a, a cover-up of some sort. So maybe she did go to speak to a police officer and file a formal complaint and they talked her out of it. That is just my opinion. There's no proof of this at this point. Allegedly, don't come for me. It's just what I feel might have happened. It's what I feel might have happened several times in this case because you do have um, Child Protective Services and DSS kind of aware of what's happening. They said they scheduled, you know, mandated home visits and home supervision and um, positive parenting courses. Like, what the hell is that going to do? But uh, they've obviously been aware of this, but these children have never been removed from the house. And Michael Valva seems to not have been worried or threatened by the fact that his abuse would be discovered or punished. And to me, that says that he felt protected. And the cherry on top of it all is after Thomas died, 
And before Michael Valvo was arrested, he set up a GoFundMe for the child's expenses and many neighbors and friends donated. And then when he was arrested, he and his fiance were arrested, they expressed concern that this, this money would now be used to go towards the couple's legal defense. And I just think that setting up a GoFundMe for your child's funeral expenses when you killed him is an absolute dirtbag, scumbag, disgusting thing to do. Obviously people didn't know at that time that he was involved, but he knew. He knew. The audio that they recovered from the house the morning of Thomas's death where um, Angela and Michael are kind of casually chatting about the fact that this poor child is just dying from hypothermia in front of their face. Just face planting on the cement because his body's not working properly. And then Michael says he's going to smother him and suffocate him. You have to really wonder exactly what happened in, in this case. And you have to wonder what kind of actual monster is this man, Michael Valva? What kind of actual monster is he? And what kind of actual monster gets engaged to an absolute monster like Michael Valva? So between the two of them, Angela and Michael, I hope they go away for quite a long time. Now let me just pull this up because I, I wrote my notes yesterday and I wanna see if anything new has come up like we do with Coffee and Crime Times. So it just pretty much says social workers took away all the surviving children on January 17th, thank God. It says Michael Valva has been with the New York Police Department since 2005, was last assigned to the department's transit force and I looked into Michael Valva just to kinda of see if he had any uh, other run-ins with, with anybody or even with the law in the past and I couldn't find anything but that doesn't mean that it's not out there. And it also says here that both Angela and Michael Valva are maintaining their innocence 100%. If these two people get off, I'm out. I'm leaving the planet. Like, f find Elon Musk, tell him I need a spaceship, I'm out. I cannot live in a world, in a state, because I live in New York, I can't live in a state that allows two child killers to walk free. Oh, so heated. Michael Valva's been suspended, stripped of his gun and badge, suspended without pay. Ooh, boo offing who, Michael Valva, is what I would say to you. Uh, he should be uh, fired. I mean, at this point, the, the allegations are so severe that I don't feel like you could ever go back to being a police officer, even if you were found uh, innocent, but there's probably laws that protect that from happening. It's just my anger coming out. And get this, this is new, something I haven't, I haven't seen before. Prosecutor said that nearly every room in the house of Michael Valva was equipped with surveillance cameras that were labeled according to the child's name and room. And the camera located in the garage was eerily labeled kids room. Oh, and, and it's been noted that the authorities did a welfare check at the residence in May of 2019, but the family wasn't home at that time. So, you know, everything's fine, I guess. Everything's fine. Apparently Thomas's mother has warned judges over the years during various court proceedings saying, my children are gonna die from the sadistic and abusive care of Michael Valva and Angela Polina, but nobody listened to her. Nobody took her seriously. And now an eight-year-old innocent child is dead. Like I said, I live in New York. It's been incredibly, incredibly cold here. Um, the night that he slept in the garage, it was 17 degrees. Add to that that he's sleeping in, in an unheated garage on cold cement with no blankets. This kid was tortured before he was murdered by his father. Tortured and taunted. The morning that he was literally falling over because he couldn't walk because he was so sick and weak from the hypothermia and probably the lack of food, the words he heard from his father were taunting. He's cold, boo effing who, saying he was going to suffocate him. This man's a psychopath. And if everything here is true, as it's being reported, electric chair. Let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know what your take is on it. It's very hard to hear these things, but I've said it time and time again in other videos, our child protective services system as a country is, is shit. It's bad. And I know whatever, they try their hardest, they do their best, but it's horrible. It needs to be improved. We need to do something to make it better. Because at this point, if we don't, we're not protecting the most innocent among us. We're not protecting children 
who are literally the best thing that this world has to offer, honestly, because they haven't been ruined yet by, by the world and by evil and by hate and hurt. So although I've covered cases of, of child abuse before, I did a whole video on it, actually, a whole video of child abuse leading to the deaths of children, and I'll link it here if you're interested, but I've done a video before, I've done videos on this before, I've talked about cases. I am definitely now going to take a proactive stance and I'm gonna look into ways that we can fix this system. I'm going to use my brain and you know, hopefully you guys will have some ideas, but we need to start something, a movement. And I've always been pissed off about it and I've always talked about how the child protective system is damaged. We have the case of Josh Powell. We have so many cases where children were just left, left to suffer, left to be tortured, left to be murdered by the, the only people, the people in the world who are there to protect them. And the system's not doing enough and I understand they do their best. Allegedly, they're overworked, they're overwhelmed, there's so many bad parents out there hurting their kids, but we need to do something. And I think collectively we need to put our brains together and just kind of brainstorm. But what kind of movement we can start, what kind of noise we can make to force lawmakers, politicians to pay attention to children. I'm definitely gonna look into this. I've been writing letters yesterday. I just went into a letter writing fury um, to politicians in New York. And I would really request that you guys help me. If you live in New York, let's send letters to the politicians, highlighting this case, especially because it's happening right now, highlighting the death of Thomas Velva, an innocent little boy who didn't deserve anything that happened to him, and how we need to really improve our Department of Social Services and our, our CPS system. We need to improve it, we need to do something. I can't stand for this any longer, because like I said, I'm, I'm just gonna leave the world at this point. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. Stay kind and stay beautiful. Bye. Water level don't break now. And the bottle's going straight down. And the river runs.